Good morning. Welcome to Young Martin's Reels. Today we're going to be talking about the Zebco 888. Now I know there's at least two different models of the 888 made. Um, these two here are early versions. This one here is much older, I believe, than this one over here. Uh, but basically they're the same uh, as far as internal workings. The other one is the Chinese made um, 888. And I'm going to do a totally separate video on those. So we're going to take that out of the picture, and we're going to work on these two USA-made uh, Zebco 888s. Um, I've already taken them apart and cleaned them. Some of you who have been around for a while know that I found this 888 uh, laying on the uh, bank of Dunlop, Lake Dunlop, where somebody had chucked it. And we're going to go ahead and pull that price tag off of it. Somebody, apparently, uh, it didn't work well, so they said, I've had enough of this, and they chucked it. And... Um, we are going to take these apart and look at them. Um, I've already done the repairs on them. This 888 actually had a, uh, I, I can't find the um, pinion gear for it right now, but it had one of the teeth sheared off on it. Um, and this 888 had this pinion gear in it. And if you'll look at the teeth on it, I think it's pretty easy to see that uh, they were pretty much completely worn off. And this was worn so bad that it was actually skipping. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna pull these two apart, lubricate them, get them up and running again, and I'm gonna move them out the door to somebody who uh, can put them to use. So um, let's get started. We're gonna start off by removing the covers on them. You're getting a two for one today. With that done, now the back covers will slide off and you can see the gear trains in them. Okay, and you can see that they're basically identical. There's not a difference between the two. So we're only gonna do one of these on the video. Let's zoom in so you can see this better. See that these are both pretty much identical. Uh, this one here, the uh, brake on it is shot. I'm gonna be replacing that as it's dry rotted. I don't know if you can see, but the uh, rubber's all split to pieces. So we're gonna be replacing that brake on there. Um, but we're gonna set this one over to the side and this is the one we're gonna work on today for the video. And the next thing we're gonna do is remove the spool, uh, sorry, the uh, spinner head. And we're gonna zoom back out a little bit so we're not upside so close. Let's get the spinner head removed. Now we're going to remove the C-clip that holds the spool on. There we go. With that done, we can now... Let's see if I remember this. Okay. Well, let's leave it where it's at for a moment. And as a matter of fact, I think it's probably being held because the drag is too tight to take it off. So, let's loosen up the drag. Now, yeah, there goes the spool off. So if you take this apart and your spool doesn't want to come off, go back to your drag over here and loosen it up. Okay? The looser it is, the better it's going to be for taking that spool off. Now, this is another thing. <clears throat> when this line gets down that far, this thing's not going to cast at all. And this one here had the same issue. Both of these were down to practically no line left on them. And uh, it's no wonder somebody took it and chucked it in a riverbank if or a lake bank if, in frustration if you don't know anything about them or how to use them then uh, they can get very frustrating so we definitely will strip the rest of that off and put on some new line for it when it goes out the door <clears throat> next we're going to remove this nut and i believe that that is a 10 millimeter it is not a 10 millimeter so let's try again there we go that is a 7 sixteenths. I'm going to leave that over here so we'll have it for next time. All right. And now we're going to remove this big nut. Or at least that's plan. There we go. Unscrew it. Put that over here. Put that off. We can now remove the drag knob. Now... 
Is it necessary to take this completely apart in order to service it? No, it's not. You're pretty much at the point right now where you could go through using some WD-40 sprayed in here and an acid brush and scrub this up and then put new grease on it. And as long as it's moving freely, as long as that spring's going down in there, you're done. Grease it up, send it back out the door. It's ready to go. But for those of us who might like have to, if you've got it, it's grinding gears real bad and you might need to replace this uh, pinion gear inside here, then we're going to have to go further into this. <clears throat> so that's what we're going to do. We're going to take it the rest of the way apart. Now, one of the things I have found, and let me show you this. When we go to do this, I should have taken this apart before. Okay, if you take and put a screwdriver across here, that keeps that spring from going down. So now what you do is slide this over, bring this down, and got to get this spring down off of it because that's a keeper. That little washer is a keeper that holds it. Okay. So we're going to push this down, bring it over and up in that hole like so. And that's what allows it to come off. Now do not, in the Zebco world, these are what they call hen's teeth because they can't find them. Okay, see how that little washer's made with the little shoulder on it? Well, that's what fits on top of here and that's what locks that in. And when people take them off, they have a tendency to lose those. And once they're lost, there are none, no more out there to be had. I managed to find a little baggie that had six of them and uh, two of them have gone into use in this reel and one has gone into use in this other reel. So they're hard to find. Uh, don't lose them. Okay, on this side over here. Now we're going to push down the other side, remove that one, and there's your brake bar. Your brake bar is removed along with your last keeper washer and your spring. Put those off. Go ahead, take this out, remove this, and remember that this has got to go back in. Your brake assembly has got to go back in before you put the spool back on. Okay. Not necessarily hooked up, but at least slid back in because it goes behind the spool. <clears throat> now, we're back to this side. The screwdriver out of the way. We have another C-clip right here in the top. And what we're going to want to do, we're going to want to push down on this. And while we've got it pushed down, we're going to want to grab hold of that C-clip with a pair of needle nose and pull it off like that. Okay, there's your C-clip. Do not release this quickly. Gently lift it up so that it doesn't shoot this part across the room. Now, when you go to take this off, it will not lift up if you just try to take it straight up. See right here? If you just try to take it straight up, it will not lift off. Rotate it around to where the flat is up against the gear and then it will come right out. Okay. set these over to the side at this point now this axle shaft will pull through the front once it's pulled through the front your pinion gear will now come out well there's there's that other part right there okay and then the washer fits on top like so and I'm gonna show you how to put that back when we go to put it in all right now take your pinion gear out and this one here is in pretty good shape. This is one I put in there just a few days ago. It's got no chip teeth. These, these are not that easy to come by, although I have been told there's a few people out there who have several of them. All right, once you've got to this point, you can take this drag out, especially if you've got it loosened all the way, and we just grab a hold of it here, pull it out. There we go. Unhook it. That's got that removed out of there. You can slide this out, move it over enough to clear the anti-reverse bar, slide that out, that's your main gear assembly, and your drag adjuster. All right, that's 
got that. And if you really wanted to take this apart, you could take that um, snap ring off of there using a very tiny pair of snap ring pliers and uh, slide this on out. But um, I don't have that small a snap ring plier, so I'm going to leave that alone. I'm afraid of breaking that little clip as small as it is. I'm afraid I'll break it. And since it's working fine, uh, there's no reason to. <clears throat> now, I'm going to clean all this up and reassemble. Also, there is a C-clip on the front of this axle shaft that you could snap off on the front to slide this whole assembly out to the back. But uh, when you look at it, when it's installed, that C-clip is down inside there. So I'm not real sure how you would manage to get that down in there to, to snap it off. Uh, maybe you could push forward on that spring enough to be able to pop that out. I don't know. I've never tried it doing that that way. Uh, if you care to try it, that's your choice. Now we're ready to reassemble. So we're going to start off by reinstalling our drag adjuster. And we're going to put some oil on this. Well, you know what? The drag adjuster very seldom is moved. So it's not something that has to wind or anything like that. So even though it is rotating surfaces on rotating surfaces, we're going to go ahead and grease that long term it will hold it better and this is something that probably isn't going to be taken out by most people when they service it so we'll go ahead and grease that okay slide that in okay and we'll see if it turns easily by putting the adjuster on here adjuster knob and there it goes okay put it up against there against the gear there it goes it turns freely you can see the gear down here turning and we'll come back let's adjust it all the way out as loose as it will go we will put a coating of grease on there and a little bit of grease on the gear itself and let's adjust it back in Adjust it in. That will take and put that grease up inside that gear through those threads. And then we just turn around and bring it back out. Bring it all the way out again. There we go. Right there. Now it's time to uh, reinstall the crankshaft. And if you look, there are some shims on here. You don't want to lose your shims because they, they're supposed to give you the correct, correct spacing between your main gear here and the um, pinion gear. We're going to slide those all the way on so they stay. And before I had found a replacement pinion gear, I had tried to shim this for closer to to take care of the... Uh, chewed up gear I tried that and I was unsuccessful with that and I had forgotten to take that off so this thing was still a little bit tight when I put it together the other day so I have taken that extra shim out and uh, we should have no more trouble with that now it's time to reinstall our drag lever right here Start off by hooking it back through this lever. There we go. Bring around. Now, when you go to put this on, see this open gap right here? That open gap, if you look, there's more of those. See, there's a set there and a set there, but those are too small for this to go through. You have to have the large set directly over top of that hole. Okay? And they may not all line up when you first try to put it on. So let's go ahead and this thing really wants to fight me as though that spring is on backwards. Tell you what we're going to do. Let's go ahead and reverse the spring around the other way. There we go. 
Now it's no longer fighting. All right, here we go. Slide it in, and as you're putting that bar in, you have to line these up so that they go into it. Each one goes in, and then it goes all the way like that. Okay, now you've got it set. At this point, we can go ahead and put our pinion gear back in. And if you want to grease it now, you can, but I believe that we've got easy enough access to get to all this afterwards. So let's go ahead and set the pinion gear back in. I'm putting the flat side of it up against the gear so that we know where it is. And we'll take our axle shaft, oil it. And this is one I oil because it is a rotating surface against the inside. Now, this part here is a sliding surface, but it only is going to operate when you're pushing in your button. So that being the case, I'm content with greasing this part because that won't slow the reel down any, any. It will make your button just very ever so slightly harder to push, but it won't make it harder to wind. So let's bring this in from the front, see if we can't get the flat spot of this to line up with our pinion gear. And I'm gonna grab hold of that. with some hemostats so that I can get hold of it. And it's easier just to rotate your shaft around until you get it to catch in there. All right, once that's done, sit this down on the surface of whatever you're working on. Make sure that your gear is all the way in and you should have an operational gear at that point. All right, now bring this back out. Go ahead and push it out with the lever. Now we're gonna put this back on. And what we've got here, we've got this bottom sleeve piece, this one here. We're gonna slide that over our axle shaft, like so. And we've got this piece, this is your anti-reverse lever. We're gonna slide that on. Drop it down onto there, and we're going to put the pin of it into that slot right there. Okay. Now, put this washer on. <clears throat> on goes the spring. Then goes this piece. And remember, it's only going to go down on the gear if you've got the flat side over here against the gear. <clears throat> Once you've done that, you can go ahead and rotate it around. And this works so much better if you have two people doing this, but if it's just you, okay, we're going to push this down, hold it right in place, and then slip that C-clip back into place and let it go. That's got that reinstalled. Okay, right now it's trying to jam up a little bit because there's no lubrication on these gears. So, let's go ahead and lube up the gears. Make sure to put some on your pinion gear. Let's slip a handle on it. Get it worked in a little bit. There we go. Okay. Now we're going to come back and put a little bit right here because as this pushes in and out, we want that to be able to slide okay. And that sleeve doesn't come down much before it hits. So you have to kind of get it on that shaft, just on the shaft itself. There we go. <clears throat> At this point, we're ready to slip our brake assembly back in. Now check your brake assembly, make sure that the rubber is holding good in it. If not, you can peel it out of there and uh, reattach it with uh, rubber cement. 
paint the rubber cement onto the inside of the rail and on the back side of the uh, brake and let it cure for 10, 15 minutes and put them together. Remember, once you put it together, it's stuck. So make sure you get it right. Okay. Let's slip our brake in. And now to hold it in place, we're gonna go ahead and slide our rotor, uh, sorry, spool back in place. We're gonna slip on the drag and adjust that down. Until it's good and tight okay, once it's good and tight that'll hold on there and that'll keep that from flying out now, go ahead spin your rotor on and that gives you a locking position for the screwdriver to slide in and that will keep that brake from pushing down when you're trying to reinstall your springs Okay, now the open side of this little keyway goes towards the axle shaft, like so. All right, once you've done that, you're ready to push down on that. Take your brake bar, slip your brake bar in and over that. Preferably don't catch your fingers in it because they will pinch. Once you got it in there, slide it. There you go, it's locked in place. That's on one side. Now we gotta repeat the process on the other side. Take the screwdriver out, move it to the other side. And that'll hold that in place while you do the other side. Put your spring in. And put your lockdown clip back in. There we go. Put your screwdriver out of the way. And you've got that part back together. Your brake assembly is installed. Throw this back in. Yep, hang on. Let's fix this first. Go ahead and install your C clip. Let's go ahead and loosen our drag back up because right now it's awfully tight. There we go. That should allow that spool to turn. It does. Go ahead. Tighten that down. Put your cap back on. Put your bar back in. Okay, put your handle back on, and your nut. And there you go. Still a little bit noisy, even with the uh, new pinion gear. I am of the impression, even though it looks okay, that it's probably about due for a new main gear. That's still a little on the noisy side, but I don't have a new main gear for it, so it is perfectly functional the way it is. It's just a little noisy, but at least it's got a good, and there's no gear lash in it, so I think it's fine. All right, now what we're going to do is I'm going to go silent for a minute. And for you, it's going to be about three minutes. And what we're going to do is we're going to yank this all apart and uh, service it and then slap it back together. All silent, all high speed, fast forward. And when we get done, we're going to have two serviceable reels. All right.
Okay, I just ran down to my garage hoard and picked up a new brake, new old stock brake assembly. And uh, we're gonna slide that in. Okay. Put just a small amount of grease right here on the end of this button because it's going to ride right here and it needs to be lubricated a little bit anyway. All right, let's go through and pull a little line off. Uh, there's not much line left on this. There we go. All right, drag's working smoothly. And uh, spool release works. Does it need new line? Absolutely, it needs a new line. We'll take all that mess off there and it'll be up to the next owner to uh, put the new line on you know one thing we didn't service on either of these two let's do it real quick it's right here and I did clean them up the other day so actually they're still pretty clean but we're gonna go ahead and grease them up so that they function well and continue to function well into the future. And add a drop of oil back here on the pivot on both sides. And when you push this on, we want to see that it's functioning. Okay, hold this down, push it up, that locks it in, and it comes out, the pins extend, you're good to go. <clears throat> so, for whoever donated this to the uh, Lake Gods, I thank you. It uh, now has made an appearance on Young Martin's Reels, and I'm happy it did. There's two Zebco 888s. They're both old. They both have a lot of wear, but they're both workhorses, and they're still ready to go out and get back to work fishing. So these are the USA-made ones, and uh, if, you, if you liked what you saw here today, great. If you didn't, I understand. You can hit the dislike button. Please tell me what you didn't like. And um, if you uh, care to see more videos like this in the future um, and have not previously subscribed, please do so. And for now, that's Rick Stivers with Young Martin Trails signing out.